What's up guys, you're watching Jane Boy TV and we are back with another reaction. Today we'll be reacting to Star Spangled Banner Story. This video was suggested by a patron, so you know I had to check it out. Apparently this is the Star Spangled Banner Story like we've never heard it. So I guess we'll find out. If you guys are new to the channel, take a second to scroll down, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the post notifications so you don't miss a video when I post. It helps out the channel tremendously. And if you guys are interested in exclusive content or you want to ensure that I react to your suggestion, definitely consider checking out the Patreon. Link will be in the description. I have tons of reactions to last songs that got blocked here from YouTube, songs that I know you guys would enjoy. With that being said, let's get right into this video. There was a lawyer once, his name was Francis Scott Key. He penned a song that I'm sure you're aware of, you've seen it, it's in most hymnals throughout our churches, it's called the National Anthem. It is our song as an American. We go, however, to a ball game, we stand in our church services and we sing the words of that song and they float over our minds and our lips and we don't even realize what we're singing. Most of us have memorized it as a child, but we've never really thought about what it means. Let me tell you a story. Francis Scott Key was a lawyer in Baltimore. The colonies were engaged in vicious conflict with the mother country, Britain. Because of this conflict and the protractedness of it, they had accumulated prisoners on both sides. The American colonies had prisoners and the British had prisoners. And the American government initiated a move. They went to the British and they said, let us negotiate for the release of these prisoners. They said, we want to send a man out to discuss this with you. They were holding the American prisoners in boats about a thousand yards offshore. And they said, we want to send a man by the name of Francis Scott Key. He will come out and negotiate to see if we can make a mutual exchange. On the appointed day in a rowboat, he went out to this boat and he negotiated with the British officials. And they reached a conclusion that men could be exchanged on a one-for-one -one basis. Francis Scott Key, jubilant with the fact that he'd been successful, went down below in the boats and what he found was a cargo hold full of humanity, men. And he said, men, I've got news for you tonight, you're free. He said, tonight I have negotiated successfully your return to the colonies. He said, you'll be taken out of this boat, out of this filth, out of your chains. As he went back up on board to arrange for their passage to the shore, the admiral came and he said, we have a slight problem. He said, we will still honor our commitment to release these men, but it'll be merely academic after tonight. It won't matter. And Francis Scott Key said, what do you mean? He said, well, Mr. Key, he said, tonight we have laid an ultimatum upon the colonies. Your people will either capitulate and lay down the colors of that flag that you think so much of, or you see that fort right over there, Fort Henry? He said, we're going to remove it from the face of the earth. He said, how are you going to do that? He said, if you will, scan the horizon of the sea. And as he looked, he could see hundreds of little dots. And he said, that's the entire British war fleet. He said, all of the gunpowder, all of the armament is being called upon to demolish that fort. It will be here within striking distance in a matter of about two and a half hours. He said, the war is over. These men would be free anyway. He said, you can't shell that fort. He said, that's, that's a large fort. He said, it's full of women and children. He says, it's predominantly not a military fort. He said, don't worry about it. They said, we've left them a way out. And he said, what's that? He said, do you see that flag way up on the rampart? He said, we have told them that if they will lower that flag, the shelling will stop immediately. And we'll know that they've surrendered, and you'll now be under British rule. Francis Scott Key went down below and told the men what was about to happen. And they said, how many ships? He said, hundreds. The ships got closer, Francis Scott Key went back up on top and he said, men, I'll shout down to you what's going on as we watch. As twilight began to fall, and as the haze hung over the ocean as it does at sunset, suddenly the British war fleet unleashed. <clears throat> he says the sound was deafening, there were so many guns that there were no reliefs. He said it was absolutely impossible to talk or hear. He said suddenly the sky, although dark, was suddenly lit. 
And he says, from down below, all he could hear the men, the prisoners saying was, tell us where the flag is. What have they done with the flag? Is the flag still flying over the rampart? Tell us. One hour, two hours, three hours into the shelling. Every time the bomb would explode and it would be close to the flag, they could see the flag in the illuminated red glare of that bomb. And Francis Scott Key would report down to the men below, it's still up. It's not down. The admiral came and he said, your people are insane. He said, what's the matter with them? He said, don't they understand this is an impossible situation? Francis Scott Key said he remembered what George Washington had said. He said, the thing that sets the American Christian apart from all other people in the world is he will die on his feet before he'll live on his knees. The Admiral said, we have now instructed all of the guns to focus on the rampart to take that flag down. He said, we don't understand something. Our reconnaissance tells us that that flag has been hit directly again and again and again, and yet it's still flying. We don't understand that. But he said, now we're about to bring every gun for the next three hours to bear on that point. Francis Scott, he said the barrage was unmerciful. All that he could hear was the men down below praying. The prayer. God keep that flag flying where we last saw it. Sunrise came. He said there was a heavy mist hanging over the land, but the rampart was tall enough. There stood the flag completely nondescript in shreds. The flag pole itself was at a crazy angle, but the flag was still at the top. Francis Scott Key went aboard and immediately went into Fort Henry to see what had happened. And what he found had happened was that that flag pole and that flag had suffered repetitious direct hits. And when hit had fallen, but men, fathers, who knew what it meant for that flag to be on the ground, although knowing that all of the British guns were trained on it, walked over and held it up humanly until they died. Their bodies were removed and others took their place. Francis Scott Key said what held that flagpole in place at that unusual angle were patriots' bodies. He penned the song, Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Or the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that the flag was still there. Oh say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? The debt was demanded. The price, it was paid. Man, what an interesting video this was. Now, I definitely have to be careful with videos like these. I don't know what sources were used. I haven't verified any of this information. So it definitely makes for a good story, but I can't just accept it as fact just because it's being presented to me. I would have to do my own research. But I think overall, the theme of this video is awesome. It's really an amazing and vivid story that does give a little bit more significance behind the words of the national anthem. And it sheds more light on just like how resilient and steadfast like the colonists were on, you know, 
being their own thing and really just standing up for what they believed in. Now, once again, I haven't verified all the details of this story, but man, it's definitely awe-inspiring to say the least. And this video made mention of like this country being founded on principles of God. And he mentioned a quote from George Washington on like American Christians or something like that. Like he'll die on his feet before he lives on his knees. So I'm sure there'll kind of be a debate over those kind of concepts. But the reality is this country was founded on Christian principles. And you guys can do your own research on that. But obviously the pilgrims left England so that they could have religious freedom or that's one of the reasons. And they wanted to practice Christianity the way they thought it should be practiced. And they wanted to do things the right way, like different from England. The reason they even left England was because they were being persecuted by the Church of England, which basically was hand in hand with the monarchy. So when the founding fathers came along, they had the wherewithal to think like, we don't want to do what England did because it allowed for religious persecution. That's where the idea of the separation of church and state comes in. What the founding fathers actually wanted to do by separating the church and state was prevent the government from being able to control religion. So basically just being the opposite of England. In England, there was no separation of church and state. So the government could persecute you because the government and the church were one. And that's why they left in the first place. They felt like they had a civic duty under God to have the country to be able to run not on the basis of God because they didn't even want the chance of there being able to be religious persecution because the church and state were one. With that being said, they used Christian principles to write the constitution, the Bill of Rights, all of that stuff because they were Christian, a lot of them anyway. And many of the founding fathers believed that the favor of God was upon this nation and that's why it prevailed. And it's interesting to see now as we've kind of moved away from that kind of thought, now all of a sudden the country looks a bit different. And now there's actually questions about our authority and about our power and about where we'll be, you know, 20 years from now. There's real fear about the direction of the country and other countries are picking up on it as well. They're saying the West is in a fallen state. So it's interesting to think about and people feel like the favor of God is kind of being removed from America. But man, this was an interesting video. It was interesting to break down as well. Now, obviously it's been a while since I've done study on this particular section of history, but you guys let me know what you think down in the comments. If I got something wrong, correct me on it. This is a great video. If you guys have any suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the content. And I'll catch you guys on the flip. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you're interested in helping to steer the ship in terms of where the music goes, you'll definitely want to check out that Patreon. You'll be able to get your suggestions to me directly. You can get your favorite deep cuts reacted to or even just your favorite songs. On top of that, you'll have access to exclusive content, songs that got blocked here from YouTube from legendary artists like the Beatles. So if you want your suggestions to be the priority, definitely check out the Patreon at this link. You won't be disappointed. Hope to see you there.